ています。important uh, educational activities. So uh, I'm going to try to be as brief as possible, taking in account the time. I want to uh, talk about minimal invasive Kirchner guided elif. That is a my extraforaminal lumbar interval diffusion, the state of the art. Uh, I don't have any conflict of interest First of all, I would like to mention some universal premises uh, that could be applied to all procedures, but specifically minimal invasive spine surgery. Everybody knows that there are many ways to peel an apple. So it means that the spine surgery is an art. If endoscopy or tubular microsurgical or open procedures all depends on the abilities, skills, uh, technology available, etc. And also, this kind of decision are influenced by the tutors, professors, etc. I am neurosurgeon, by the way. So the third premise is the spine surgery has to follow always the universal principles because it's a science behind the art. So MI Kirchner guide extraforaminal lumbar interval diffusion is just a variant of the MIT leaf and is indicated when the goals are very specific. So uh, foramina decompression, interval diffusion, rigid fixation in the lumbar spine. And it's useful from T12L1 to L5S1. And is a uh, really a good attempt to diminish the rate of reported complications of the minimal invasive transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion. The four premises is the decision-making process is absolutely influenced by accumulated knowledge that the science, training that is art and experience. The idea is uh, to correlation the milestone that is the clinical diagnosis with the imaging diagnosis and functional diagnosis to get the picture generator and then center it inside the tube. That is uh, the surgical target. So any decision, any decision made should prioritize the patient safety is very important. We know that with the open techniques, the muscle damage is very important and could diminish the good clinical results, could uh, get worse the prognosis of the patients. So ELIP is a technique uh, has uh, been described by the Robert Kurzbuck and, and colleagues in the past with very nice resource, taking advantage of the very nice anatomical corridor. So they report the preliminary results of 92 goods satisfaction. And then other authors from South America, Federico Landrell and colleagues, describe the MI uh, technique for the same. Now, what I'm gonna present is a variation of this technique using cannulated cages and a cage wire as a, a guide in the technique. Very important as in the other uh, procedures, uh, as in the all procedures I can say, is identify the anatomical layers in the microsurgery tubular MIE lift. Uh, frequently in the spine surgery, we go to the spine feeling absolutely all the muscles behind the bone. And obviously that causes irreversible damage to the functional part of the muscles. So it's very important to recognize all the layers and it's very easy in reality to get it. So 
The anatomical uh, landmarks, the main anatomical landmarks for this technique are the multifidus longissimus and iliocostalis muscles, and the sulcus among them, including the, a medial sulcus between the multifidus and longissimus, and the lateral sulcus among the longissimus and iliocostalis. Also, the medial and lateral process and the joint cleft and the, the transverse processes. That, uh, uh, those are the, the anatomical landmarks uh, to get the foramina. Kevin Foley described in 2005 the MIT lead, including a dilation to don't the, the insert the paravertebral muscles with very good results. And promoting that a bone resection for medial, from medial to lateral, including medial and lateral processes, as you can see in this graphical drawings. So once we go resecting the, the lateral process, we can achieve a, a very nice uh, direction to put inside the intervertebral space a cage. Uh, usually in this technique, we use the corridor among the multifidus and longissimus, or well, the approach could be transmuscular, transmultifidus approach. So uh, the results are wonderful. And we have now more than uh, 13,000 papers talking about uh, MIT lead versus open T lead with a very nice results. Uh, and the conclusions are that the MIT leaf has, has similar or better outcomes when comparing with open T leaf. Essentially, the items where MIT leaf had clinical significance were long term follow up in bus back pain, and less perioperative blood loss, less hospital length stay, and cost of thinness favoring MIT leaf. Similar or equal outcomes in short term follow up with all the bad fusion rates and complications, but it might leave requiring more surgical time and higher radiation exposure. Despite that, the compli their complication rate is around 15.6%. It's, uh, it's not few. So, and with the most complications being durotomies in 5% of the cases. That's the reason why we are uh, proposing uh, another possible nice solution. So, in the extraforaminal lumbar interbody fusion, the anatomical landmarks are the same, but we usually use the anatomical corridor between the longissimus and iliocostalis. And this corridor in blue here uh, have exactly the good direction to achieve the good position inside the foramina and avoiding too much uh, compression or distraction over the dural content inside the spinal canal. Uh, we describe in this uh, journal, Columna Columna, the microsurgical landmarks of the technique taking in account the facet process, the joint cleft, transverse process, and both the pedicles and the intervertebral disc. It's very easy to identify inside the two, as you can see in this uh, surgical image. The medial facet joint, the lateral facet joint, iliocostalis muscle, sacral wing, S1 vertebra and transverse process of L5. Very easy. Uh, so, it's very easy also to define the cranial boundary to drill. As you can see, this is a usual image under the microscopical vision. This is the lateral facet, the joint, the joint cleft, medial facet, the tip of the lateral facet, and the base of the lateral facet that you can see in this model. So, uh, this is just to show how at the end, we don't need to, to resect all the, the facet process. With, uh, with the resection uh, partial or complete of the lateral facet, facet is enough to put a cage inside the space. 
we don't need more. So usually in this kind of procedure, the bone resection is from lateral to medial, as you can see diagrammatically uh, in this uh, way. And uh, just for an uh, academic uh, issues, I'm introducing the pencil inside the young cleft to define the medial limit of our resection, as you can see. So it's very easy to identify and peel the facet process and identify the joint cleft, and then we can drill from lateral to medial. So uh, once uh, we, we, we complete a partial resection of the lateral uh, facet process, we put the cage inside the intervary space with minimal bone resection in order to achieve an anterior and central posterior and, and to don't compress too much the dural content inside the spinal canal, as you can see. So this is a transop OR image, a light, and you can see the position of the tube perfectly, a minimal resection of the, of the lateral facet, and it's very easy to identify the muscles, the multifidus, the longissimus, and the iliocostalis. So this uh, sign out perfectly the direction of the uh, good position for the case. Another case to, to show the same, but in this case, you can see in the three-dimensional reconstruction how the ring of the tube is perfectly focused over the foramina and over the intervertebral space. So allowing us to complete easily, quite simple, hold the procedure. Once we introduce the, the case, is uh, uh, and with the uh, medial facet in, in its place, we are protecting the transversal root perfectly. This is the, the camping triangle, and we can see the root here, the, the exiting root, the transversal root, the cage inside, etc., the inferior plate, and it's very easy to identify. Usually, we have in the 100% of the patients peridiscal arteries or veins that uh, has to be uh, coagulated to don't cause uh, bleeding. So when it's necessary uh, more decompression, we can till the tube and the table in order to achieve a good dipsy and contralateral decompression. So you can see here, we complete uh, the cage uh, position and then we can resect, as you can see, the whole uh, facet joint, including part of the lamina, even contralateral lamina, to get a very nice decompression. So at the end, you can identify the lateral facet, the young cleft, medial facet, and in the last uh, picture, we have completed a very nice decompression. This is the Cambin triangle. This is the exiting road, traversing road, and dural sac in, in a very nice way. Yeah. So once we identify the anatomy, it's a very easy to complete the drill. And because uh, we know that in the surgical planning, uh, we ten, take in account the pedicles in a true AP view, uh, more or less 1.5 to 2.5 is the sulcus among the logissimus and iliocostalis. In, in thin patients, it's possible to palpate in very easy way with the fingers, the sulcus. And then we dug the two perfectly aligned with the intervertebral space, as you can see. And then uh, we are in the direction of the intervertebral disc. Once we are in the good position, we can identify all. This is a very brief video just to see how easy it is to identify the different layers inside the tube. Sorry. You can see here 
because the lordosis with a minimal incision in L4, 5, 1 of 2 centimeters is enough to achieve until three pedicles. So I'm drawing over the skin of the patient the pedicles in AP2. You can see the skin, the thoracolumbar fascia, the common fascia, the sulcus among the longissimus and iliocostalis, and then we, we can go in with the finger, or with the tube, following the sulcus. As you can see, no bleeding. We are far lateral from the midline. Once inside, it's very easy to identify the articular capsule, the iliocostalis muscles, and the other muscles, and the joint cleft. This is the lateral facet, the joint cleft, the medial facet, the pars interarticularis, the transverse process, etc. Once we identify the anatomy, it's very easy to drill the lateral facet from lateral to medial, knowing that the lateral facet corresponds perfectly with the safety triangle of Cambi. So, we can go inside to resect the disc, et cetera, et cetera. But what is important is to see that it's very easy to identify the anatomic aspect. And at the end, absolutely, re absolutely respected the muscles by a minimal incision is enough to complete not just the intervary fusion, but also the rigid fixation. As you can see, and post up images by a tube with 14 millimeters of diameter is enough. So uh, the, this technique of ELIP include the introduction of dilator inside the intervertebral space uh, and uh, channel working with the idea to isolate the vascular and neural structures uh, outside of the tube, as you can see perfectly. So we can, inside the tube, prepare the end plate with the specialized instruments to be sure that, that we have a good preparation of the end plate, as you can see. So we never uh, get contact with the nerve or, or, or ganglion or vascular issues or dural content outside of the tube all, always. So once we prepare the, the end plate in different ways, we can put inside a lot of bone and then we can uh, put the cage progressively with the hammer until get a good position, medial and anterior in the intervertebral space as I uh, have a, this summary, a schematic summary, as you can see. The cage is cannulated, cannulated and uh, is uh, put in position over the K wire to avoid displacement against the root, the nerve roots. So it's, it facilitates perfectly uh, the position of the cage. You can see here the exiting root, traversing root, etc., and the cage inside. So once we have uh, the good position, we can uh, make the rigid, uh, the rigid fixation. The learning curve is very important. I published my, my learning curve using uh, around 100 patients and my asymptom was around 40 cases after the first. So it's not a uh, complex but in my fellowships with a methodical training, we achieve the same asymptotan in the case number 16. So the repetition of task is basically, as Dandy said uh, a long time ago, is the key to be a master in the different techniques. Uh, to prove that the muscles are preserved, really preserved, 
I published this interesting study in which I compared in patients with unilateral fixation, the operated side versus not uh, operated side. And I found a uh, very, very nice conserved muscles over the operated side. The results were with no more than 9% of atrophy in comparison with the other side and comparison when the literature was in which uh, a lot of authors report more than 30, 40, 50% of atrophy after the, this kind of procedures. And using uh, fluoroscopy guide pedicle screws, I found an accuracy of about 99.3% in my cases. Uh, also, I compare the possibility to make unilateral versus bilateral fixation, and we don't found a statistical big difference among the groups in cases of non-lytic spondylolisthesis. So the, the fusion uh, that I, can, I, get, I got was around 89% and I report the results in this uh, paper in the past. So essentially are the same in comparison with the open techniques. Uh, one important issue is for L5S1, That's good. <laughs> we, have, we have the possibility to treat collapsed, very collapsed spaces and to get lordosis in those spaces, as you can see in different examples of collapsed L5S1 intervertebral spaces. So it's a very nice technique and principle for L5S1. Also, in upper segments, it's possible. You can see a patient with a local uh, kyphosis because uh, the degenerative disc degeneration with ossification. You can see, and just to, to show the planning and how, again, we are uh, far lateral respect to the midline and with a two centimeter incision is enough to achieve a, a very nice uh, leaf. Usually the time is around 60 minutes per, per space. And now in the most in, of the cases I'm using navigation to avoid uh, radiation essentially, as you can see, very far lateral incisions to preserve the muscle. You can see the, the case insertion and, uh, and the kyphosis correction perfectly. And this is OR, a live uh, uh, image to show the position of the tube and the preservation, uh, partial preservation of the lateral process, as you can see, and, and the very nice position of the case inside the vertebral body. So again, respecting the, the muscles, the paravertebral muscles in the patient, as you can see. So uh, the fixation is completed over the same incisions in a very easy, easy way with a perfectly position of the screws after the procedure, as you can see. So, uh, in the monitoring is mandatory, and we can see how the, in, the, in this patient was absolutely better. This is a, another case. You can see a listasis, L4, L5, and stable, and stable listasis, non lytic listasis, the perfect case with central, little bit central and lateral compression in the MRI images and then a very nice position of the case, a very nice re recovery of the height of the space, as you can see, and improving in the monitoring versus pre-op study. This is another case we have here, 
two listesis, L4, 5, S1, uh, grade two, both, and stable. And it's very, uh, very typical case for this uh, indication for aminal and central uh, compression, as you can see, is important. And we can put a good uh, high of cages inside the intervertebral space. And at the end of the operation with very good lordosis alignment and very good uh, recovery of the spaces in L4, 5 is one with a nice widening of the foramina in a bilateral way. So uh, we can repeat again and again the same technique, improving the, the neuromonitoring. Another more cage, lithic cage with a absolutely collapsed space and stable patient, central minimal compression, but uh, very important for amina compression. And you can, you can see the the procedure, the position of the cage, the recovery of the space, and one arm image just to show inside the case uh, with the instrument to put the case and the direction exactly to show how we are absolutely outside of the, the spinal canal, respecting the dural content and minimizing the possibility to damage it. So, uh, you can see here perfectly the procedure, nice procedure is just to, for academic issues, this kind of images and comparing the, the pre-op in red with the post-op in blue, absolutely improving of the, of the neuromonitoring during the transoperatory, including the motor responses. So, we can we can see again another case very very important case uh, with discartrosis listasis etc and too much lordosis and how we can get a good recovery of the lordosis and the collapsed spaces with a very uh, nice final uh, result so uh, I think that is enough to say that D-Leaf is a very nice technique, different from the T-Leaf uh, because it uses a different anatomical corridor with the, in order to don't compress the dural content and to try to diminish the rate of complications reported with the T-Leaf. That's all. Thank you so much for your attention, is enough. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Soriano, for your nice presentation.